teaching social engineering, let's say from Twitter or email, or let's say from, let's say WhatsApp. No, not WhatsApp, let's just say Twitter or email, something that you can interact with a web application. So once, once, once you get this, this link, you open the link at, at step two, and then at step three, the, the, the server processes the contents and reflects the contents on the, on the page that is going to. So the user gets the, the page and then interprets the malicious JavaScript in the server's response as part of. I don't know if you're free PHP. And there's this part where you reflect code onto the page, or let's say you are echoing the page as a stream, or you have like page written on, on top, it processes the get, re get requests, all that stuff, or posts. And then here at the bottom, you have, you have HTML, HTML code, mix, mix PHP with the PHP with the HTML. So you have variables that you've gotten from the code that you wrote at the top from from PHP. Let's say, for example, you have, let's say, get uh, ID, and then this ID are reflecting into the, into the page. So if you don't if you don't sanitize this properly, don't escape the HTML tags, um, you're in for, for an access. Uh, Sorry? OK, so, so yeah. So so these are the types of, of process scripting that are present in the world. So there's one reflected XSS. The one that I've just explained to you, that diagram, that's reflected XSS. There's DOM XSS, there's stored XSS, and then there's self cross site scripting. So let's start with reflected XSS. So reflected cross site scripting, as I've just said, arises when an application receives data in HTTP requests, a GET request, more so the GET parameter. You've interacted with the PHP, there's this uh, global variable, the GET one. So this one, you, you can see that when you look at the browser and uh, you see you, you, you enter some, some value, some parameters in, in its value. For example, let's say for example in Google, you search something on the Google form the Google search form, and then when you visit, when you, when you get redirected to your search results, you, you you normally notice something. The Q equals to Q equals to your search. This the thing that we have just searched. So what's that called from the question mark? It's normally a question mark. Then it's the parameters and the value. So that's the what that's what's called the query string. So, so you, for that, you're making a GET request with the server. And these parameters, if you, if you, if you receive these parameters to your web application, let's say you've written it in PHP or let's say Spring, if you don't sanitize them properly, they'll get reflected onto, onto the page or the document that are going to serve to, to the user. So this is, this is where cross reflected cross-site scripting arises. So this one, this attack, this attack, you, you, you can only target a single user. You cannot target multiple users at once, unless you like you're, you're spreading an email campaign, for example. You, you have so several emails, several emails to several people. Then maybe, maybe that in that way you can target so many people. But there's also there's another way that you can have the most impact, which is this stored XSS, which I'll, which I'll talk about later. So yeah, so this is a sample code. This is just a sample code that I wanted to show you of how cross reflected cross site scripting may, may arise in a PHP code. Because reflected XSS, it's mo mostly the problem is how the server interprets the user input. So here, here is uh, some PHP code. Don't worry if you don't understand some PHP. It's relatively simple. So here I'm just I'm just declaring a variable. I'm getting uh, the value of name. Name is just a, a parameter from the query string. Yeah. So once once you let's say you have name equals to let's say Humphreys, 
or anything else or from at the top of the in the in, in the search bar or, or of your browser for example let's say you have visited a page let me show you an example mm. Mm. let me show you let me go to google let's say here i'm searching something let's say humphreys or let's say mmu so here you, you can see that this is the query string from here from this from from this question mark up to the end is what's called the query the query string and then q is a parameter q is a parameter uh, sx srf is also another parameter so there's so many but this is this is the syntax for it so let's say let's say google uses something let's say google is written in php for example so let's see something uh, yeah so let's say google has been written by php so how, how will it get that queue so this is how it gets the queue from php use this global global variable called the get the get i don't know if it's called the global variable or something i'm not sure but you can search so yeah so so the name value oops so here we get get the value of name goes to this variable here in such string and then we echo the contents and we dynamically this is dynamic uh, content here the name you load the page, you enter something different. The page you love, your name is something that you have typed differently. Each time you, you replace this name. So this is the dynamic content and it's also user input. So if so, as you can see here, anything, anything that I provide here is going to is going to be reflected on onto this uh, name name part here. So as you can see this from this string, this is HTML content, this is HTML content up to this point, this is PHP. And uh, what did it, what did it, let's say the developer wanted, the developer assumed that he'll only get a name, the, a valid name from somebody. This is Humphreys or Lasta or anybody else's name. And a name of someone that can't contain HTML code in it. So that was the assumption that the developer made. So you as the hacker can now come and put a HTML content. So let's say for example, here at P, I end it, I end the, the P tag. And then I start, I start writing script, script tag. I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you an example, a practical example next from this Botswana Academy part. So yeah, so don't worry. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just telling you what, what could happen here in this in this code, for example. So I, I start again with script tags, and you know very well that script tags in HTML, the browser interprets it as code. Anything inside the script tags is JavaScript. So I can I can I can I can I can give my my JavaScript. I can give my JavaScript onto the page, and it gets onto the web application. I end, I end the P tag, I start script, I write my own JavaScript, malicious JavaScript, for example, I can do anything that's on any, any, I can run anything on, on the site, on the site with JavaScript that, it, that allows, the browser allows, allows me to execute. So I, I do my own JavaScript and then I say, like, for example, alert, alert one. So when you, when you, when you give to somebody else on, or when you try it on, on your, on your browser, this will get executed. You will get executed and the pop pop up for alert. That that alert for JavaScript will appear. Let me see if I have the code here. Let me put it here. I think I have the code. Mm. 
visiting one tutorials. This is example. And if I have PHP. HP the means to just a moment I forgot to install PHP. Yeah, so yeah, so let me let me show you an example. Uh, local host. Oops. Uh, See. Yeah, so this let me let me show you. This is just the example in here. And where is the where is the enemy? This is just the example for this one. This one here. This one. I'm just showing you how this would work practically. So the code, the code I've already written it. I'm just executing it on my on my machine. So name equals Pinto. So is that you can see here Pinto has been written. Let me open, you can see the HTML part. So you see Pinto is, the name part is the dynamic. Uh, Pinto, you will have to zoom your screen for that part. Oh, of your code. Zoom. Yes. Oh, yeah, to the control the plus. Yeah. No, this one here. No, the other one. Yes, yeah, view source. Yeah, view source also. Yes. So it's visible. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so name parameter. This is the get one. Yes, you can see the dynamic content. I place. Last time, you see it's, it's changing. So the problem is, for this code, it's not uh, sanitizing properly the contents that it's receiving. It's not sanitizing them properly. So let's say, for example, I, I put, for example, I end P, and then I put, um, let's say, H1, and then H1. Yeah, so let's say, for example, Pinto. You see that uh, HTML, HTML has been added to the page here. So let, 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 me, let me put this one, this one here on, on this other side. And you can see what happens. So you can see in here, let me put it here. Yeah, you see that uh, Pinto has been in, in headed. Or let, let, me, let me put it like this, bold. 
can see Pinto is in bold now. You can now see Pinto is in bold. So here we are, we are adding our own HTML code. So this is this this alone is not a, it's not dangerous. It becomes dangerous now when I add a script, for example. And here that's P here is script. Uh, let me put some some JavaScript. Now you, you can see that we are we have executed JavaScript onto this web web application, and it was not intended for JavaScript to run on this application. So that's the reflected one. And with this, for this for this uh, for this code is not is not that uh, dangerous. It becomes not dangerous. Let's say you are inside an account. It's a, for example, Twitter. And once I can execute JavaScript on your, on your account, I can do other stuff. Like, let's say, for example, send money to my account. If, uh, for example, you have uh, those those endpoints are being, you're using, let's say, of Ajax to interact with uh, those kind of endpoints. Because nowadays, nowadays they have shifted to using APIs from when, when they are building a web application. You have an API for your backend, and then your front end, you have JavaScript that is doing all the work for sending the requests, doing all that. So sometimes you can have JavaScript running. Let's say you have an XSS on a web application. JavaScript will run, will run and now you can, you can also send a, a request. You can send, for example, a request to send for, for me money from your account. And that one, when you send, when JavaScript sends that request, it sends it along with your cookies. Your cookies are the ones that authenticate you to the site. And this becomes very, very dangerous at, at that point when you have uh, JavaScript running on your account. So that, that's, uh, that's, so that's reflected XSS. So this, this, this other one called the DOM, DOM XSS. And now this one, this one happens on, on the client side. The problem now here is not the server side. Now here, we are interacting with Java, 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 with JavaScript code on the, on the client side. Yeah, so for this, you all know, of, you have all heard about DOM, the DOM, the Dolby document object model. I don't know why this in in Sumbua. Yeah, so DOM based XSS vulnerabilities usually arise when the JavaScript takes data from attacker controlled controllable source such as that. Yeah, so for this, then there are usually some dangerous functions in a, in JavaScript. These ones that include the eval. I don't know if if you if you if you're a JavaScript developer, you already, you do you have interacted with eval or in a HTML. So here the there's there are these concepts of sources and sinks. So sources are where you you input your data. Let's say, for example, the URL. But here in JavaScript, like interacting with the fragment, the fragment part, the part after the hash, after the hash on the URL. So there's this. Uh, th these are called the sources. This is where you, where you as the attacker, inputs the inputs your payload to be triggered on the users, on the users page. And then there's there are this other there's this other thing called sinks. So sinks, what sinks are, are, are where that, that data ends up on. Which function does it end, end up on? And there in, in JavaScript there are normally so many sinks for DOM XSS, but the common the common ones are eval in HTML and uh, document dot uh, write. And these ones are just to add uh, HTML onto Onto a way for JavaScript to add HTML onto the document. So yeah, so you need to place data into source sync. 
to cause a sync that causes the execution of arbitrary JavaScript. Let me show you an example. So this is the example in a, this this one I call it from Potswiga, a lab that I was I was trying to solve. So I think we will, I'll also take you through this one practically. And uh, this one you, you, it's found on Potswiga, Potswiga Web Security Academy. So this is this is this is JavaScript that I was trying to analyze to find where the the vulnerability could arise in this code in this particular code. So this uh, you start here, you get an HTTP, WS Academy. Yeah, it connects to it, function, event, and then this data was is controllable from the page event dot data. So here, header string. So this, this is the vulnerable, this is the vulnerable function here. So you, as you can see, the user controllable data is getting to insert lab header. So you, you look where, where, where is the definition for insert lab header. Insert lab header is here. So we have, we once again analyze this function over here. So if us uh, document get element by ID, yeah, you get that element, you get, you get that ID, and then we add a HTML content onto that ID. So yeah, so here, JavaScript is getting, is getting data directly without any, any sanitization. And this is going to be included onto the DOM. So here is just, just the same for, for the PHP one. You don't have any any sanitization. The you can you can insert uh, HTML tags as well as script tags, hence triggering an a DOM cross site scripting. So this one happens centrally on the on, on the browser, as opposed to the the cro reflected cross site scripting that requires a server server side processing. So yeah, so that's that's how it how it happens. Let me see if I can if I can log in to my account. So see the client side. No, it's not this one. Let me log in. So yeah, I've logged into my Kutsiga Academy. And also this is a very great site to, to learn uh, this web, web security stuff. They have a lot of great uh, materials to get started with. So let, let me go to Academy. Hmm. Zero labs. Oh, and here it is. Start reflected dome. Let me use this one. It's taking too long.
so yeah this is a sample challenge from web security academy that uh, is, is a dom access in this uh, web application and, and you are supposed to find it to trigger an alert so that it, it, once you trigger it you, you have solved the challenge so first uh, you look at the javascript code because dom access happens on javascript so let, let, let me search for javascript stuff so js lab header yeah so this is the, the content here let me see what can i interact with mm -hmm. research let me go to get no it's not here ws i don't know i think this one is a bit mini Let me put a breakpoint here. No, this, this one is a bit complicated. Let's see, lab header uh, on message. Let me, let me, let me stop it. Uh, lab header. Um, check into this. Oh, let me put it this way. Hmm. So here, let me see. I think here it is supposed to be like this. Huh. Event data. Well, let, 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 let's see. Let me just see something from the solution. Solution. Uh, which. Yeah, so. The search, the search part, the search part, the search part is what gets reflected onto into the DOM. Why, why can't I see any message? I think it's what gets reflected into the room. Let me try a uh, kid over to. So, uh, this dynamic content. Yeah, so here you can see that uh, Black Ops. The thing that we have searched is what's getting reflected from JavaScript. You can see we are, we are we, this dangerous function here. We are getting a limit by ID. You can see, let's go to that div or the tag that's being 
we tag with academy, academy label, academy lab header. So let's search here for Black Ops. Yeah, so search message Black Ops. Uh, academy lab header. Where is it? Yeah, here. Let's see. This is the deal. Academy lab header. Let's see. Yeah, you, you, you can see that uh, there's no longer any the script part because it's now reflected. Let's let me put here. Yeah. Yeah, you can see here there's the script part. So script and the browser try finishing the script part. So let, let, let me put it like this. Alert one. Let me see. Script, but <laughs> I don't know why things are not going my way today. Let me let me see like from this one. Let me steal a bit <laughs> image. Let me remove this one. Let me try this one. Let me just try as it is. Yeah, let's let me just steal a bit and see why why my mine wasn't working. Yeah, so let's see. Let me let me see. and such message. Yeah, here I, I forgot to put the source, the source part. And it seems like my, this browser is the one refusing to execute script. Yeah, so, so that's that. Yeah, so that, that's uh, DOM XSS for you. Yeah, so. Let me let me see. Yeah, it's the same one here. Yeah, so and for our next one. Uh, yeah, so the next one is stored, the stored XSS. Stored stored cross-site scripting. And this one is this one is this one is very similar to, to the reflected one, but here. What, what the payload gets stored onto the server. Let's say it's stored inside a inside a database. For example, you can have a, a, your 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 web app. Let's say you have an e-commerce website where a seller a seller can add his or her own products, the name, the ski, and all that, all of that other stuff. So let's say you have a malicious seller who places their own uh, name and changes the name to an XSS payload. Let's say he places script alert one or something like that. And then when, when the user, a leg legitimate user tries to access the, the product that that seller is trying to sell, 
and the payload gets executed on his other side. And this is also one, this, this sort of exercise is also called a persistent exercise. So it persists onto the web server and uh, it, can, it, it can affect multiple users. So yeah, so stored, stored cross-site scripting is the most dangerous type web applications that allow users to store data are potentially exposed to this type of attack. Just as what the example that I've given you for the e-commerce website. So stored XSS occurs when a web application gathers input from a user, which might be malicious, stored input into a data store for data use. The malicious data will appear to be part of the website and run within the user's browser under the privileges of the web application. This may also be called second order XSS or persistent XSS. So that's that. Yeah, so let me show you how stored XSS might work. I think Potsiga have, they have, uh, some examples. These are not going to be that that hard. The domain is usually harder. Um, let me see. What? Let me show you. Let me try this one. Yeah, so this is this is a shop shopping was home. Let me see the description if they, are, they have vlog and stuff. No. Let me play around with each view post. Yeah, so view post is the place where you can insert. Yeah, so, so interesting for this, you look for, you look for input that might get uh, stored onto the, onto the server like for example comments comments obviously they'll get stored onto the server for other users will come will come visiting let's say they want to look at this uh, this this blog post for example they also want to see the comments and these comments have to be persisted on the server so that each time anybody comes they'll get the, the, the same comments that were posted earlier by other users so this is a nice place to test for stored XSS. So let's say, for example, let me, let me just use, use the site as a regular user. Let me just post. Yeah, so it's posted. Yeah, so yeah, so that's posted. You can see here Humphrey Pinto, and then the, the link uh, of the website that I have provided is also there. Let's try other stuff. Bring HTML tags. Let's say for example or B and see how 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 it, how, how they are processed here. Let me also put B. Uh, or underline. Let me use underline. Um, yeah, also. So yeah, here also something else. 
and see how. Uh, let, me, let me move this one first. And see how, how it would reflected. So let me open the page source. With, with uh, James. Uh, see which one is so this this one was filled that also name yeah Is the comment that I placed? Uh, I, 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 I didn't put a comment. Fuck. You put a comment. Yeah, so now let, let, let me look at uh, the page. Yeah, so in the comment part is the one that is not being sanitized. As you can see here, they have not escaped the, the HTML tags. So that's probably the where the the vulnerability is. So let, let me try something else. Yeah, yeah, as you can see, I've, I've, I've successfully injected HTML code onto the page. So this is stored. So if I reload the page again, it will pop again. You, you have seen because it has been persisted onto the server. You see, I reload it again. And this affects anybody that comes to this site who is later authenticated. So yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's cross -site, stored cross-site scripting. Yeah, and, and this is an example. This is a, a basic example that Web, Web Security Academy has provided. Then there are usually so many other labs, but we'll not go the, through them for today because of time. So where was I? So the thing that that has left is uh, how to use cross site script. So cross site scripting, the, its uses are uh, how is stored cross -site. So cross site scripting mostly they use it to to steal cookies from uh, from the victim or to perform authenticated actions on on behalf of the user. Or even sometimes redirect the user to to a phishing page, or other or other malicious websites. Yeah, so those are the main use cases of cross site scripting. You can also use cross site scripting to create a keylogger and see what the user is browsing, see what what the users typed when they are browsing. Yeah, so how to prevent? How to prevent basically don't trust any user input and as always sanitize use the the safe functions for every language for in php always use html escape html entities i think it's html entities 
HTML, special chairs, uh, and the other functions. Also use frameworks, templating frameworks are also good. The escape search, Nini. The escape HTML tags. And yeah, so don't trust user data and use frameworks. That, that, will, that is the most common safeguard for this kind of attacks. Yeah, so so that's the that's where I can end for today. And I hope you enjoyed the the session. Yeah. <laughs>